Hey guys, Tony here. Uh, I want to talk to you guys a bit about programming. Our intern Cameron has been asking a couple questions this week, and I thought this was a great time to kind of go over exactly my views on programming, how you prepare clients, and specifically this one client in particular that we're going to talk about, and how uh, We IFAST helped prep her for the IFAST powerlifting meet that comes around uh, twice a year. So one of the things that I like about powerlifting meets and working with clients to work towards those is that it's going to be really, really objective. So how do I know if a client's getting better? Well, have their weights gone up. And, you know, with these type of sporting events, is that there's always going to be a trade-off between health and performance, especially in the powerlifting community where I have to intentionally limit some of the client's movements and, you know, get them in the position where it may not be the most beneficial for them health-wise. But at the end of the day, I have to have them lift the heaviest weight possible. And I just want to kind of go over these things because, again, I've had these great conversations with Cameron this past week. And I thought this would be a great topic to go over. So let's talk some shop. When I start looking at programming for our clients, I ask myself three questions. Is that where is my client going? Where are they now? And how am I getting them there? So I start building a roadmap in my head. So it's important to kind of see exactly where this client wants to end up in their head, where you want them to end up, see how well those two match, and then setting the expectations to those clients as far as what you're go they're going to need to do to get to that highest level, whether it be I want to lose 25 pounds or I want to total a grand in a powerlifting meet or I want to be the best on my on my team in AAU basketball. So you have to start taking all these variables into account. And the more I start programming for different people, as I've been at IFAST, the more I value these questions. Because when I find that I try to program for too many different things, I end up not getting anything. <laughs> and you know, it's important for me to outline this before I write for a client because it keeps me on task gives me a goal for one, the client, and two, me to work towards as we're going through their programming. So a little bit of a story is that I have this powerlifter we've been training here for about two years now, since I'd say 2015. She came on when I was an intern here during that summer. And she's a powerlifter in her mid-50s. She is a highish training age, and I say highish. Because she came from a very CrossFit um, powerlifting background. So there was, I guess, some structure. I just don't know how well that structure was put together. So she came in uh, with some shoulder issues, some hip issues, and still wanted to lift very, very heavy weights. And with her, she's super motivated. And if I wrote, if she needed to run, uh, go through a brick wall in a program for like three sets of five, she would, she would run through that wall. Like there's no hesitation. She's go, 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 go all the time. And, you know, you normally like to see that in a client, but there's going to be a point where it goes too much, where a client's doing, uh, not getting enough sleep, uh, pushing themselves too far and work, everything else, and they're not recovering. So it, would be, it provided a very interesting uh, person to program for because now – not only do I have to program the right amount of intensity, I also have to program the right amount of recovery and regulation with all of her training. So this was a cool little challenge for me. And, you know, with her last uh, powerlifting meet, she gained eight pounds on her total over the course of five to six months. And, you know, she was happy she went up, but she wanted to take uh, this next program to a higher level and really dial everything in. So when I started looking at it, I need I saw where she was as far as her past shoulder and hip issues, which I have to take into account. And from there, I have to look at, you know, what does powerlifting need? So where is she going? Because in the powerlifting meet, you have nine plus lifts over the course of the meet. Uh, there's lots of rest in between lifts. So as far as <laughs> repeated conditioning, I have to get her in a very sports specific environment so at the end of the program or the end of her prep I have to make sure that she's hitting heavy singles for a ton of rest time and I work backwards from there so 
if I only have five to six weeks with her, I'm only having her lift heavy singles or doubles or triples. But if we have a couple of months like we did, is that I'm going to have her lift a higher volume. And that just provides a little bit of a better base when we start narrowing towards that meat prep. And I'm going to have to intentionally limit the amount of movements that go into her program. Because again, if I'm working towards a powerlifting meet, is that these are not uh, very dynamic athletes. They don't move side to side. They don't jump. They don't run. They're meant to lift heavy things. So in order to get the best performance out of them is that I have to intentionally pick movements that are very bilateral or sagittal in nature, reduce her movement options, which will cause her to lift more weight. But here comes the really <laughs> balancing act of being a coach is that there's this line of health and performance. Because with her, it's going to be health is going to be subjective to everybody. It's like, I want to be healthy enough to move around with my grandkids, or I want to be healthy enough to do this sporting event, or I want to be healthy enough to climb this or get out of bed without pain. That's going to be very subjective. Performance, to me at least, is very objective. Is that, are you doing better in your sport? Are you scoring more points? In powerlifting, are you lifting heavier weight? So it's very black and white, in my opinion, where are you lifting more weight? In health, there's more variability, more options. How do you get somebody prepared to go through the trials of life? You don't know what's going to come up. So I have to give them as many options as I can from a health perspective as a coach if I want them to survive the trials of life. In performance is that they're going to need just a couple of skills, and I need to uh, direct all of her energy towards those couple of skills. And with powerlifting, we're talking about the big three, bench, squat, and deadlift. And in her sport, she has to perform those lifts. So I can specialize and say we're going to do deadlift only or bench only, but she wants to do all three lifts. And I can't ask for specialty bars or anything like that. It has to be a straight bar. So whether it's a healthy person with someone that maybe never needs to do a back squat or a bench press, I can find ways around that. She has to perform those three lifts in some way, shape, or form. So I have to find this nice balancing act that to give her enough movement options so she doesn't explode, but to limit her enough. So when come meet time, she's in this locked up position, this very sagely dominant position where she can lift the most weight possible. And I have to direct her program to do that. So her numbers coming in was at around 180 pounds body weight. She had 175 pound squat, 127 pound bench, 220 pound deadlift, a total of 522 pounds. Now for her, she says her squats are strong point. Her deadlift, she has trouble getting into the bottom position of a pole. And her bench has always been her weak link. Uh, she had, she's been having left shoulder issues since she came in here. They have flared up every now and again. So when it flares up, she'll still push through it. But, you know, come a week or two into that <laughs> push that she goes through, she, she'll let one of the coaches know or I can't do this anymore. So she, again, running herself into the ground. So me as a coach, is again, I have to find this nice little middle ground as far as giving her enough options to pull back on and then limit them close to meet time. And the setup for my programming was my version of conjugate periodization. So every day we had a maximum effort lift, a dynamic effort lift, and some repeated effort movements. So that's a little more higher volume. So for, for a maximal effort, uh, at least initially, I find the need to go strict to 1RM uh, every single every single training session. So giving lower training age, at least in my opinion, I decided to give her a little bit heavier uh, doubles and triples and even up to fives and slowly started limiting that as we got on. And we started with 90 seconds of rest, but at the end, close to two weeks in the meet, as you'll see later, we actually went up to three or four minutes of rest in between each set. For a dynamic effort, uh, typically, if you look at Book of Methods, there's anywhere between 40 and 60% of your 1RM that you do for doubles or triples as fast as you can. Uh, because I have the tool, I use velocity-based training. So I use the gym wear, and I gave her certain velocities. And I'll show you guys how I program that, but I used velocity-based training to regulate her dynamic effort. And re for repeated effort, uh, with her, it's just volume movements to complement the main lifts. So if anything where she's doing a little more bench press where that's a weak link, maybe I do accessory work like a dumbbell press or something where I can do a little bit higher volume and help either pattern that or give her a little bit more options 
So those are my three categories with that. And you know, I can show you guys her five or six months of programming, but I really wanted to kind of focus on the meat prep, at least for this presentation. So she's five weeks away from the meat. And so we have three days, so Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And again, we have them categorized in those three different sections. So I have my maximal effort, my dynamic effort, and my two repeated efforts. And there's not, there's not much variety uh, and there shouldn't be. Again, this is a very, this is a sport where there's only going to be three movements. So I need to build everything around that. So with her back squat, I kept a little bit of a higher volume initially, and we slowly start working our way down. And my goal for her, again, was the fact that she'll run into a brick wall and drive herself into the ground, is I want to try and shore that up a little bit and give her enough room and enough energy to recover. So my goal for her was at least for the first two weeks is leave one rep in the tank for weeks one, week two. So anything she can maybe hit a weight that five, maybe even six reps so that she's going to do for uh, four reps. And then so weeks three, weeks four and five, you'll see in the next program is that I've actually had them dial in and actually push a little bit more. And with the higher volume, this has allowed her to recover. With my speed movements or her deadlifts, I did doubles and triples uh, for her bench. And what I did was I started up high, but ultimately, again, she's just going to be moving a single heavy load as fast as she can. So I started in a high velocity, and over the weeks, I just started lowering down the velocity. And I wanted to learn how to put a little urgency on the bar because, again, she was really grinding things out, but it looked like she just took her time with every single lift. So, again, I wanted to give her a very distinct number that she can compete against herself with. And the velocity also takes care of regulating her intensity so I'll make sure she's doing dynamic efforts dynamic and not having another maximal effort lift on this. And as far as the repeated effort, I just picked some movements that I think would complement her main lifts. So I have incline dumbbell bench, I have walking lunges, I have some chest supported rows the next day. And all these, again, are really doing is just giving her a little bit of volume, complementing these main lifts. And the same things occur with day two and day three is that, again, I have my my maximum effort lift, so we have our bench press, very similar, speed squat, and then I have our accessory movement. So my RDL is meant to complement my deadlift, chest support row also. And same thing here. Now, the one thing that I've done for her that I wouldn't normally do with anyone else is I have this push-up to one-arm support. And to me, that just gives her a little bit more of a reaching mo uh, movement, a little bit more... <laughs> In my opinion, if you want to say serratus volume, if you want to just say more reaching. But to me, that kind of helped buy her shoulders some room as far as what can accomplish. Because, again, with this heavy amount of benching, as far as a speed bench, her maximal effort bench, and her incline dumbbell press, is that I wanted to throw something in there that was a little more uh, focused on her shoulder health and make sure she held together going into the meet. So those were her three days bench, squat, and deadlift. And here is her a uh, little bit more, if you want to say conditioning. I was, did it as ways to maintain or increase some of her training volume without wearing her out. So I had farmer's carries uh, to get, just to give her a little bit more of a work capacity as far as, it, in, in my mind, this is a uh, strong man's or a power lifter's cardiac output. And I also gave sled drags. So again, it's, 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 these are uh, for her to help uh, for recovery towards the end of a workout, but I still get a little bit more of a weight and training volume along with this. And the HICT prowler throws, again, it's just concentric only. I just wanted to have a little bit more upper body recovery in there. So again, all these are meant to give a little bit more training volume and weight into her program, but they aren't going to be too taxing. They just help her recover at the end of a session. And then her final two weeks leading up to a meet, if we start looking here, I didn't change around the movements, but what I started doing was uh, going a little bit more uh, intensity, a little less volume. So we started doing doubles and then going into singles towards the end again, more sports specific, giving more rest. And now we're gonna work on commands. So with the squat, step out, squat, make sure she goes down to depth, come all the way up rack and getting her in the mindset of that meet. And the same uh, next two days, 
are very similar. Yep. And again, that week two is going to be the week of the meet. So if you look at all the uh, movements, is I've actually shortened up the sets. But I like to keep the intensity because, again, that's going to – I don't want her detrained coming up to the meet. I still want some semblance of intensity to prep, but I want, I want her to be able to recover fully for this meet. So those singles weren't necessarily uh, maximum one rep max, but I gave her 85 to 90 percent of her one rep max, and we worked on her openers and seeing what was a good weight for her to start with. And – uh, the results were actually pretty good. It's uh, Her squat went up 28 pounds, her bench went up 7, and her deadlift went up 17 pounds. So her total increased 52 pounds, or 8.6%. And she said during her training, she felt a lot more refreshed, both at the week during the meet and during her training. And that was really big to me because, again, we have somebody who is go, go, go. And if hard work were results, I mean, she would have a 1,000-pound total by now. So I just need to be really smart and start regulating her training. And the lessons that I learned during this was that, uh, you know, one, it's really good to listen to her meet. Because I think I, at least for that, I did really well because she was saying like, okay, I feel like I lack urgency. And to me, it was like, how do I say urgency without just yelling at her, go, go, go. And to me, that was VBT. Or to me, that was RPE or something, something where I can just give her directions and just have her do it. And I think I regulated the volume and intensity pretty good for her. Again, like she's she's used to just grinding herself into the ground. So letting her recover, I think, was a big portion of this. And looking back at this program, you know, you always kind of look back and you're like, oh, I should have done this, should have done that. To me, maybe I should have lessened the variety of movements leading up to the meet. So for a program for this, I feel like I was doing a little bit more um, – multi-directional work. I had like kettlebell lateral lunges in there. Uh, to me, again, I was buying her room, but like looking at it, like her hips weren't bothering her as much. So I think I had missed opportunity to accumulate a little bit more uh, volume, maybe with like some goblet squats instead. So I would like to definitely try that for the next meat prep. And I think I could do a little bit more thought into her accessory work, saying like, okay, where is she uh, getting stuck on these lifts? Can I incorporate maybe with her bench, which is her her words, her weakest lift is that maybe I can incorporate a little bit more two and three board presses uh, as long as her shoulder can stay healthy. And the next challenge for her is that um, she's still powerlifting, but now she's gone keto and she's lost a significant amount of weight, 20 plus pounds. And what's really cool is <laughs> because, you know, she's a stud, she maintains her strength relative to her body weight. Uh, so her numbers did drop off, but regulating, they didn't, they didn't dro drop off at all, again, relative to her, her new 160-pound body weight. So now it's, well, can I increase her total? And for that, we're going to have to find out, see if uh, she can, uh, you know, hold herself together and we can push through a little bit like we did previously. So if you have any questions about this and kind of how I design uh, these programs, uh, ask them in the Facebook group. Uh, tag me. I'll try to get... Uh, back to them as soon as I can. And uh, thanks for taking the last 10 to 15 minutes out of your time to listen to me ramble. And again, if you have any questions, just please let me know. Thanks, guys. Take care.